Hi guys, and welcome to this first video in a new series that I'm calling Simplify OpenTX. So the idea of this series is to help people that are new to OpenTX or maybe even new to um, radio controlled transmitters in general and help guide them through setting up a model um, and we'll progress on to more complex things as it goes on. If you find this video useful, uh, if you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell, you'll get alerts for when the next videos are available um, and a like uh, on the video would be great too. Um, so what's going to happen in this series in general? So as I say, we're, we're going to start with uh, the, the very basics. So I'm assuming you don't even know what a transmitter is and we'll progress that on through uh, setting up a base model and then we'll head into complex things like uh, logical switches and uh, global functions, flight modes, all the good stuff that you can do with OpenTX. So in this video, uh, because it's the first one, we'll have a look at what OpenTX is and how it relates to transmitters in general. But by the end of this video, you should be able to set up a, a basic four channel aircraft on the transmitter, have it bound and have the servos and everything working. All right, so what is OpenTX? It's a powerful programmable open source firmware for transmitters. And basically what it will do is provide top level uh, features for your transmitter, which could be at almost entry level prices. So we're talking a transmitter in the region of, I think the cheapest is around 120 pounds, which is very cheap for a radio transmitter, but it will have features that are on top level transmitters. I mean, some of them uh, I only learned, well, I learned maybe a couple of days ago, but a power box system has only just implemented the flight mode features that are found in OpenTX. There are very expensive transmitters out there that might not have the same capabilities. So from that point of view, it's a very good system. The disadvantage is that it has got a reasonably steep learning curve. But hopefully that's where these videos will help. So what transmitters can use OpenTX? Well, I have one right here. This is my FreeSky Tyrannus X9D. Um, this is probably one of the more famous OpenTX transmitters. But you'll find that um, most of the, well, pretty much all the FreeSky transmitters. So the Light series, the Tyrannus series and the Horus series all can use OpenTX. Um, the other transmitters as well, such as the Jumper TX, uh, sorry, Dump, Jumper T16 and T12 run OpenTX. The new uh, Radio Master TX16S will run OpenTX when that comes out. And there's also an implementation for the FlySky Nirvana. So um, that's what supports it at the moment. <clears throat> there's also the TBS Tango is running uh what's called freedom tx which is a fork of open tx but what's going to happen eventually is that will get merged into standard open tx and that will work in that as well so there, there are a few what they called forked operating systems and one of them is jumper tx which was originally on the other jumpers but they're also now integrated into open tx so it runs on quite a few radios so what we'll do is now we know what it runs on we'll actually have a look at the radio and see what it all means. So over to the desk. So we're at the desk now. And as I say, this is a FreeSky Tyrannus X9D Plus, which runs the OpenTX firmware. So what, what you'll find is a lot of OpenTX transmitters have very <clears throat> quite a few things in common. Some will be missing um, but some will have extra features as well. So what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm going to treat it as if you've never seen a transmitter before. So I'm going to explain what all the bits are and how they relate to OpenTX. So the first one we have are these two things here. They're, they're technically uh, called gimbals, um, but in OpenTX they're referred to as sticks. So if you see anything in the menus referring to sticks, it's referring so these, the actual physical movement of these things here. So what you have on a, a transmitter is different, what they call modes. And what that means is um, each 
action on here will do a different thing. So this is a, a mode two transmitter. So this here is the throttle, and as you can see, it, it, it sticks wherever you leave it. You have the rudder on here, you have the elevator here, and you have the uh, roll axis here, which is controls the other ones on the plane. So th that's, that's mode two. Mode one is different, I believe these two are reversed, so you have throttle, rudder, um, elevator and aileron on, on a mode one. But uh, there are four modes. Uh, but I believe mode two is, is now probably the most common mode. So the next thing, I've, I mentioned what these control, but that's also quite important for setting up your receiver and uh, flight controllers, that sort of thing. So e each of these gets sent over in an order. Uh, on different radio um, brands, the, the order can vary, but on... Um, Oh, well, on Free Sky, I don't know if it's open text in general, but for, for most case, on, on a, a, I'd imagine an open text system, the first one is aileron, then you have, sorry, aileron, then you have the elevator, then you have the throttle and the rudder. And to find out the order that is, is expecting, you take the first letter of each one. So this is set up for AETR, so aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. Uh, you can get other like spectrum, I believe, is uh, tear, so throttle, elevator, aileron, rudder. But um, I, I just stick with AETR now because it's easy enough to remember. So that's that's the sticks. The next, the, I suppose, well, one thing if I'm, I'm mentioning transmitter is if you haven't got one already, you may see a difference where it's, there's a standard version and a version with what they call for. And the difference is that the way that it actually reads the movement. So on a standard, it will have what's called a potentiometer, which is basically, if you imagine a piece of metal and a, uh, another piece of metal will physically move over it, which <coughs> changes the resistance on that piece of metal. So that's a standard type of a potentiometer. Problem is they can wear out and they're not so accurate. Um, also, you, you have physical contact, so it's friction, it can add, you know, feel, feel to the gimbal. So with the Hall effect, there's actually magnets, um, and it reads the inductance of the magnets. So there's no physical contact, there's no friction, it's more accurate, and they don't wear out as quick. Well, actually, they, they shouldn't really wear out, to be honest. But, so if you get the choice of uh, a standard and hall effect, uh, and I know stuff like the jumper, you get the, the jumper T16 um, and the T16 Pro, the Pro has hall effect. Go for the hall effect, especially if it's only about £20 difference. This this uh, transmitter came with the standard gimbals and it cost me about £60 to upgrade to the hall effect gimbals. Um, and I won't go back, I, I like the hall effects much better. Um, so yeah, that's the gimbals. The next thing that I'm going to talk about are these things here, and they're called trims. Uh, they're trims in OpenTX, so that's nice and easy. And what they do is uh, they basically adjust the middle point of the servo on, on the aircraft. So for example, if when you fly along, you find that it puts the nose down a little bit and you lose height, you would click this trim to add a bit of up elevator to bring the nose level and keep it flying straight. So that, that's how you do it on traditional aircrafts. On flight controllers, it's slightly different. Um, depending on flight controller, you could use these, you might not. It, so I'll, I won't go into that at the moment, but all you need to know at the moment is their trims, and traditionally they're used to actually keep the plane level hands off. So it's a, it's a setup. Later on, we may use some of these as switches because you can repurpose them. But as I say, OpenTX is very powerful, but at the moment, we don't need to know how to do this. So that's trims covered. The next thing that we have is switches. Um, there's, there's actually two, four, six, there's eight as standard on the X90. 
and that seems to be the, the standard number. You can get transmitters with more, um, and you find that the um, slightly lower end or the light versions have less. So the QX7 doesn't have these two switches. And what you um, find, which is quite strange, is you you have to ignore this. I've added this, this, this switch here was originally here. So that's where the labeling is different. But you see the switches always start with an S and then they have a letter A, B, C, D, and then up the top you have E, F, um, G, and H. And those, what you find quite weird is that the QX7 doesn't have these two switches, but instead of relabeling these two, they keep the same label. So this is still F, SF and this is still SH, but it just doesn't have the SE and the SG. So that, that's the switches in OpenTX. It, it's, as I say, this is quite simple. And depending on, on the, the uh, transmitter as well, you'll have different configurations. So on the X9D, and I believe on Jumper, Horus, all that sort of stuff. The front four switches are all three position switches. The two sh shoulders are three position switches. The only difference is the back two, if it will focus. So this one here is a two position switch. <clears throat> so a lot of people use that as an arming switch. And this one here, is a momentary switch so it's just a flick so people use that to reset timers uh, that sort of thing um, the next thing after switches are these things on the slide called sliders again not all transmitters have these the qx7 again doesn't have these um, I believe the light series actually has them at the top, but then they only have about four switches in total. So it has sliders, but only four switches. But these, uh, the way to think of these is, is similar to this. It's just on the side of the radio. So these are uh, potentiometers. Um, but as far as OpenTX are called, uh, uh, is concerned, they're called sliders. And moving on from the sliders, we have what they call pots in OpenTX, which is short for potentiometer. So again, they just uh, they just rotate and measure where you leave it. So what you can use, I mean, people usually use the sliders for thing, things like um, pan and tilt. So when they're flying, they can adjust the slider and change the angle that their camera's looking at, that sort of thing. Or if you've got a glider, with a full house setup, you may have this set up as a crow brake, so that's no crow, that's crow. And then this could be your throttle, so you still have a controllable throttle. And the same with these, I mean, you, you could, I believe with helicopters, they use this more to, to set things up, but uh, I have this one set up as my volume for the transmitter, so you can do all sorts of stuff. So that's, that's the pots. And the main reason I've separated them out, they, they work in exactly the same way, but in OpenTX, they're just seen different. These are these are known as pots, these are the sliders. So these have the numbers S1 and S2, and these are LS and RS. The next thing that I'm gonna mention, which this radio shouldn't have, um, but you'll find the on the Horus um, and the Jumper and the Radio Master, this is a six position switch. So on the Horus, they're in the middle, these two are over and you have the Horus, the six position in the middle. And then on the Radio Master and the Jumper is actually six individual push buttons, but it all works off of this. And in OpenTX, that is labeled as S3. Because you can actually set up as another pot if you want, or as a multi-position switch like this. So, that's that thing here. Um, and that basically covers all the switches on the radio. Um, these down the bottom are all to control what happens inside here. So what we'll do now is have a look at OpenTX itself. So, what I've got is I've set it up like this on my pod at the moment. 
as you heard, I have I have intro music and an intro screen. It's all configurable, which I can show you how to do in later videos. As soon as I said this, let's just turn the volume down. So, provide all these sounds you can assign yourself, but with this, I'll switch the sounds off just because uh, it's better on your ears, I guess. Right, so what we have in OpenTX is an info screen when we first switch it on. So as you can see, I've got a timer on here. It shows you the switch positions. It shows you the trim position. So if I move that up, you'll see that trim going up. And it also has, you've got the slider and pop positions. So this should control this one here. And again here, so you've got the pots at the top and the sliders at the bottom. So the only thing it doesn't actually have a position for is this one, because on this radio it shouldn't really have it. But um, other radios it may actually have a, a position indicator for that. But that's the base screen. Uh, what we also have, these buttons, you can usually do two things with them. So the menu button, if you just click it, you can go through and choose different models. Um, so if I go through to the end, so you can have 60 models on, on this particular radio. If you want, you can back them off to the min memory cards and put something else there, but 60 models is probably plenty for a lot of people. Um, as you can see on, on my flight controller models, I all I change is the, the radio system that it uses. They're all bound to the same model. Uh, apart from the vector stuff. So I know it's all bound to the same model. Same with my quads, they're all bound to the same model. They're just the transmitter system that, that differs. So if you click it once, it goes into what's known as the model menu. If you hold it down, it goes into the transmitter menu. So this is all the tools and everything that work on the transmitter. And you can see different menus and different options on here, which again, we won't go through in this video uh, because you don't really need to, to go through any of this. But um, the only one that may be useful is this one at the end, which shows you the firmware version you're running. So at the moment, I'm on the most up-to-date version. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the model menu. As I say, we'll dive into stuff on that later on. But for the minute, we don't really need to worry about it. So what we'll do is we'll set up a new model just so that you know how to do this. So what we're going to do is we'll go in the menu and I'm going to go right to the bottom just so I know where it is. And I'm going to set model 45 up. So you just hold it down. So long hold on enter and then create model. And what that will do is what's known as a wizard. So you select what you want and it will take you through the steps to actually create the model. So a lot of the work is actually done for us. Um, what I will do, I'm going to go through the wizard and then I'm going to delete everything and then show you how to set it up without using the wizard. So you know how, how it all works. So you choose which type of graph that you want. There is an option for helicopter as well, but on this radio, I don't fly heli, so I've turned it off. So you should get a wizard for helicopters as well. If you're using a flight controller, such as INAV or Beta Flight, just choose the aeroplane. Don't worry about the port of the wing. You just, you just need the four basic controls, and then you can set up everything else. So we're gonna click Enter to choose aeroplane, and then it will ask you uh, what channels you want everything in on. As, as I said earlier, uh, there's the AETR, which is your aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. And that, that relates to the channels that are being used uh, to send those signals across to the receiver. So, <clears throat> so we'll set this up as a standard a AETR model. So we want the throttle on channel three, which is correct. So page through 
has your multiple ailerons, yes, we want it on channel one. We're only going to set this up as a single channel. You can change it to dual channel if you want each servo controlled separately. To change it, you just press enter and it gives you the options of whether it hasn't got ailerons at all, whether it's got one or two. So we're just going to choose one and then click page. Has your model got flaps? For a minute, we're going to say no. I'll show a video how to set the um, flaps up better in the future anyway. Air brakes, no. And then it's asking about the tail section. So has it got an elevator, which it has, and we want that on channel two. Has it got a rudder? It has, we want that on channel four. Page through, and then hold that down, and that will confirm everything. So now we've got a base model. So if we, we're in the menu, so now we're selected. Um, I'll show you how to get to it. If I, if I go into this, you click select model and that will uh, choose that model. So hold it down, select model, there we go. So with the model selected, so it's got the little star next to it, we'll press the page button and then that's how we navigate through the menus for the model in particular. So we can give this a name. So I'll call it Simplify, just because then it's named after the series. So you, you go up and down to choose your letter, long hold, we'll put it as a capital. You can hold the buttons down. <clears throat> and when you're done, you can either just press enter to go to the end or press exit. What you can do is set up a, a model image. So if I just set this to the acro what? So when, when you're on the main transmitter page out of the menu, you just get a little picture coming up there. Again, I'll make a video showing where to get these images from and how to put them on your transmitter at a later date. So there's a lot of stuff on this page uh, that I'm just going to skip through for a minute because, <clears throat> again, it will just get a basic thing set up here. But basically, you've got a, a timer, which actually let's set up a timer because if you're flying a traditional plane, uh, you want to know when your LiPo is going to run out. So what we can do, we, we just click on it to enter the timer, click again, and then we can choose the type of timer. So on is just uh, when you arm, it, it starts. We've got throttle seconds and throttle percentage. <clears throat> now the one I tend to use, and then throttle time as well, uh, or you can have the timer activate on a switch. What I tend to use is throttle percentage because it basically counts down a full second whenever you're at full throttle. If you're at half second, or sorry, if you're at half throttle, it takes two seconds to count down a second. So it's proportional to the position of your throttle. So if you fly at full throttle for three minutes and you know that's where your battery is going to uh, run out, then you put three minutes in here. But then if you fly the same model at half throttle, it gives you six minutes of flight time. So I, I prefer this, this method. I'd say you can you can use other methods, um, but this is the one I'm going to recommend. It's, it's the throttle percentage, and then to set the time, you just click in it. So if we say three minutes, which is probably a good starting point, fly it for three minutes, or fly it for the three minute timer. It could be up there for, as I say, six, seven minutes, depending on how you use this. Um, so fly it for the timer check your battery if you can get a bit more out of it just bump in a bit more um, the seconds are separate from the minutes and hours just to, to make it a bit easier um, but that's it so that's the throttle setup you can give it a, a name if you want uh, persistent means that whenever you switch the transmitter off and on again it stays the same so you don't want that um, so when you switch the transmitter off, it will reset. But seeing as we're adding a timer, I'll also show you in this video how to put in a switch to reset the timer. Uh, countdown, 
you can have silent or you can have beeps for the last 10 seconds or you can have a voice telling you uh, or haptic which is for force feedback so it vibrates the transmitter so you can also change how long it, it tells you and you, we, we can show you other things later on you can add pre-flight checklists uh, with a text file on the on the uh, SD card. This is a fairly important thing, which we will go into, is uh, the default switch positions. So if we set up an arm switch on our model, say I usually have this as uh, the arm switch. So I have it as disarmed this towards me because I find it easier to flick it towards me. And then that is armed. So when I switch the model on or the transmitter on, I want it to be disarmed. So I'll put the switch in the position I want it to be in, and this applies to every switch on here. So put it where you want it at the beginning, and then if you just hold down the button on there, you'll notice that F is now pointing down. So now when I switch the transmitter on, it will make sure that F is in that position. Um, you can do the same with pops. You can have a center beep if you want a center beep on your throttle. Uh, there's plenty that you can do on this transmitter. So if we press page again, we go into flight modes. Again, this will get covered later. And now we have inputs. So if you remember, uh, I said that these are known as sticks um, in OpenTX. And what inputs does is assigns a physical thing. So in this case, our sticks to an input on the, on the actual aircraft and they are different because um, you, you've got the physical movement which can only do one thing on the input you can actually change it to have curves on it for expo um, you can have a different inputs depending on the switch position so for example uh, I have a hotliner which I want to have two different setups for testing. So I I have flapperons, which I have on here, not a throttle. And I have, I can't remember which switch I've used, I think it's this one. But depending on which, which position this switch is, will change what I use for throttle. I can either use this for throttle, or I can use this button here. Now this button here is just, soldered directly onto the contacts of this so they are the same button effectively so it's just momentary switch but i can choose which i use for throttle and i can do that on with a switch on the input screen so anyway we have our inputs as i said the next thing is mixer so this is where you can add expo weights um if we're doing a, um, a flying wing this it will be set up in here so what that does is mixes different channels together. You can add um, extra things. So say, say you have flapperons. If you had two aileron channels and you put the flapperons on the slider, like all on here, then the more you increase it, the more it can add to both sides of the ailerons. And you still have your full aileron control. But again, we, we're getting out of our depth at the moment. We're just sticking to basics. For a basic aircraft, that's all you need to know. Then we have our output screen, which um, on a basic aircraft is where you reverse your um, servos if they're incorrect. So that's the only thing at the moment we're really going to be using this for. So to reverse it, you just go to this arrow at the end and click it. So that's the aileron. So you can see the arrow here moving as I go left and right, because that's reversed, that will now be that way, that way. So that, that's how you reverse the channels, which as I say, you, you may need, if, if you set this up on your radio and the rudder's going the wrong way, or the worst case, you find that you're at full throttle, <laughs> you just reverse that on these arrows here. So bringing that up, always test your model without a propeller on. Uh, we don't want chopped up fingers. So that's where you reverse these things. 
And for the basic setup, that's all we really need to worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll briefly show you some other things that we, we have curves, we have global variables, which is comes in for the programming side of things. We have logical switches again, which is a programming thing. And we have special functions where you actually use switches to do certain things. So what we're going to do now, uh, I'm going to set up a very, very basic uh, arm switch. Uh, I, I usually do this a, a better way, but just uh, I'll put a link in the description to my website where it shows you how to set up an arm switch really nicely. Um, but, but for the sake of this, we'll make a really, really simple one. So what we're going to do is we're entering into the special function, click it again, and we'll put this switch in the disarmed position. So we'll click that, and then we're going to, we're going to override, but we're going to override channel 3. Remember, A-E-T for throttle. So channel 3 is our throttle, and we're going to set this to minus 100. And then the final thing we need to do is click that to activate it. So now, whenever our switch is in this position, no matter what, what's happening with this, um, it will always be a zero. And so the, the, uh, the thing on the website, it will actually check the position of this. So if you are in mid throttle, you can't arm it until you lower it, which is a lot safer, especially you know, if you've got no flight control, if it's just a traditional aircraft, it's a much better way of doing it. The other thing I'm going to do is we'll add one more. And what we'll do, we'll just click in our momentary switch to select that. And then what we can do is go through to reset, timer one. Okay. So if I exit right out the menu now, clicking that switch will reset the timer. And then it should start counting down again. There we go. As you see, a half throttle it takes to us as long now to count the time back. So, there you go. It will reset if you power off and back on. So, that is the basic aircraft through the wizard. And what I'll do now is show how to do it if you don't have the wizard, because I've, I've heard some Tyrannuses the wizard doesn't appear. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll just go through, delete everything. and show you how to set it up. It is, it is really straightforward. And what I will do is show you how to... Copy that. I'll show you how to add Expo as well, just because it is useful for um, a new model. No, I won't. I'm going to do a second video straight after this one with Expo, release them at the same time, and then it doesn't confuse me. So I'll, I'll include Expo, ex, Expo and what's traditionally draw rates, but on these you can have triple rates. So I just call it rates. So we'll do Expo and rates on the next video, which will also be out the same time as this one. So if I exit right out, we have absolutely nothing on our model. If I move these, I'll page through to the output screen, you'll see nothing is working whatsoever, apart from our arm switch is forcing the throttle load. But if I put, put it so that it's armed, nothing's working. So that, that's where you can see the, the disarm switch is working. Um, so what I'll do is go into the menu, and then we'll page through. And it is really a simple case of adding a new input. So again, this I'm just going to use the first letters. And you choose, click to choose your source with that elevator aileron. That's it. So all we're going to do is assign our inputs to begin with. So this would be our elevator. It's already on there. 
So the source is already decided. I'll show you where this is actually set. Um, but as, as I sh showed you on the aileron, it's really easy to choose your source. So just to make it clear, you click it so it's flashing, and then you just move the stick that you want to operate it. So if I do it that way, it will choose rudder. If I do it that way, it will be at bottom. So the last one is our rudder. Wrong hole to do up the case, and that's already on rudder. So there we go. We've created our four inputs. Um, so now we page into mixer. And because this is a very basic mix, we know that our, our receiver is going to be AETR as well. With FreeSky, it doesn't actually matter because it just has numbers on the uh, on the receiver. So, if, for example, if you've got a jumper and you're using Spectrum receivers, you may need to do this in the same order as a receiver. But I'm so say I'm using FreeSky, I'm going to do it in the FreeSky order. So again, you just click Enter to add your new mix. We'll call this A, because I'm probably going to write an aileron. And then here you choose your source. Now it's, well you, you can just do it like that, and it will it will choose, choose the input. Uh, you can, I believe, set it to switch, switches as well. But there's a little tip. If, if you don't want to do this and you want to find it through the menu, a quick way of um, finding different parts or different features you can assign it to is if you long press on enter it brings up a list to get to that part quicker so as you see when I mentioned going through the earlier stuff it was called sticks, pots, trims and switches and that is all because it relates to this menu so you also have channels, trainer uh, so as you can see you, you can set up to mirror channels, all sorts of stuff with this radio, or reverse. So you could set up an aileron, choose the aileron channel, reverse it with, with the weight, and yeah, it's, it's a very, very highly programmable um, uh, firmware. But for this, we're just going to use inputs, and then we'll find our A input, which is one pass. There we go. And so the easiest thing now is just to move it. So that's, that's how you set that up, exit out. So again, channel two, it's already selected uh, elevator for us. So we exit out. This would be throttle. And this would be rudder. Right, so that, that is done. You don't actually need to do anything in here. You I mean you, you can name these, um, but I don't tend to do it in the radio just because it takes so long. So what I'm going to show how to do now is we'll add expo. Actually, no, sorry, I was going to do that in another video. So that's, that's your basic start. I'll exit back out. And if I page through again to the outputs, um, the channel monitor, which is basically your outputs, you see disarmed and armed. So throttle's now working, rudder's working, elevator's working, and elevator's working. Throttle's now not working, because we disarmed. Okay, so that's, that's how you set up your basic model. What I will show you quickly is, as I say, if you if you are using jumper or any of the multi-protocol module um, systems, you may find that your, your receivers are expecting something different. So if you hold down the menu button and then go through to, I believe it's hardware, it could be radio settings, right? Uh, yes, it's radio settings at the very bottom. <clears throat> you can change this here to whatever channel order you want. <clears throat> and that should then, when you just set them up in uh, 
the inputs and mix, or it should put them in the right order. So I'm going to leave mine on AETR. And this is also where you can change the mode. So as I said, mode run was <coughs> mode two was rudder, throttle, elevator, and aileron. I'll switch it over to mode run. It shows you that it's rudder, elevator, throttle, aileron. There's also mode two and mode uh, three and mode four with all different setups. And you can actually change the spring tension over to this side so that the throttle then moves. But I'm going to leave mine on mode two, AETR, just because that's how I like it. So the next thing that we need to do is bind up a receiver. So what I'm going to do is go grab a receiver and we'll come back and we'll plug some servos in and just show you how to get that set up. Right, so here we have an L9R receiver from 3Sky. So this is, the L is signifying that it's a long range receiver. And so it's not going to be the easiest thing to do with this. Um, because they tend to, if they're too close to the transmitter, they jitter and they don't like it. But we're gonna, we're gonna persevere. So what you have on a, a tra traditional transmitter or receiver like this, <clears throat> is you have the pins on the side where you put your servos straight in. This one also has a, a pin out on the back for what's called RSSI, which stands for Receive Signal Strength Indicator. So what that basically means is it told you how strong your signal is. Um, also, we have SBUS here, which is a digital protocol. So all the information on, on these pins, well, it's, it's actually a 12 channel receiver. So all 12 channels will be output through the SBUS pad and that can go to flight controllers, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we have this one down here, which is channel one. So you can actually plug in nine servos into this plus SBUS, plus the RSSI. If you know a bit about uh, FreeSky at the moment, the, only, the thing you'll notice that's missing is called S-Port, which is a <coughs> is smart port, which is the telemetry protocol for FreeSky. Uh, that's because the L9R is a non-telemetry receiver, so it doesn't actually send anything back to your transmitter at all. So this, this is the, the best traditional uh, receiver that at the moment. So what we're going to do is wire it up and what you'll what you'll see on the ends is it's got numbers. So they relate to the channels uh, in our mixer table on, on the transmitter. So one is going to be A, two is going to be E, three is T and four is R. So what we need to do is plug our servos in there. Now what I have is I've got a couple of old servos. These two are from uh, uh, Excalibur that I upgraded. So they can be our aileron and our uh, elevator servos. So they go into A and T. Again, if you're very new to the hobby, you'll see on this your focus, we have three cables coming out of the servo. They sometimes vary in colour, just looking, they're all about the same on here. Uh, but you have a brown, a red, and a yellow. So the brown is the ground, red is positive, and the yellow is the signal to the server. And it's a great, great system because no matter which way you plug these in, you can't blow anything up because the power is in the middle. But what you need is you look at the signal cable, so in this case the yellow, and some it's orange. And what you do is on the side, focus, you can see it's actually got uh, the negative is the ground, plus is the positive, and the little um, it signifies pulse width modulation. That is the signal. So the yellow for the signal goes at the top on this transmit on this receiver. So that's how you you wire these up. So we've got our, um, our ailerons and our elevator. I'm going to set the blue up as the throttle. So on a nitro plane or a petrol plane or a diesel plane, if you've got one, you will use a servo for the throttle. If you've got an electric plane, this will be where you plug in your ESC or your electronic speed controller. 
So that goes into there. If it's an ESC, it will also provide power to this, which is handy. And then the final one, which is going to be this uh, uh, terrible tower pro servo, that's uh, going to be our rudder. So that can go into it. So there we, there we have it. Because this doesn't have an ESC on it, I'm going to have to hook up external power, which again, if you've got a petrol, nitro, or diesel, yeah, an in internal combustion engine plane, you'll need to hook up external power anyway. So you can use any port for this. So I'm just going to stick it in there. And this is just a, uh, a six or four amp UVEC, which will output five volts to this. Um, depending on what servos you've got, you could output more power, but purpose, we're just going to use this. So I've, I've just got this hooked up to a big switch just to make it easier for me um, because binding free sky isn't the easiest thing in the world. So I'm going to plug that in and it will do nothing because I've not switched the switch on. But that, that can go off screen. If you don't need that, we just need everything on here. So that's our receiver connected up. I'm going to try and get these antennas out of the way so that I can get this on screen as well. Because the next thing we need to do is bind it. So what I'll do is I'll get that over here. I'll point the antenna like that. It should actually help us. With antennas, what you have is the antenna here. And this is a standard antenna that you find on many transmitters. And what you actually have, you have to imagine that the radio waves are coming out of the, so the long sides like a donut. So the very top and the very bottom of the antenna has very, very bad radio reception. So what I'm gonna try and do is point the bottom of the antenna towards these antennas and hopefully reduce how good the radio is working. So what we do to bind it up, let's get it on the screen, go into the menu. On the first page, it's quicker to press the plus and go to the very top. So what I'm going to show you is the options, because again, this will be slightly different depending on your system. So <clears throat> using the FreeSky stuff with a FreeSky radio, we're going to be using the internal RF module which is what sends and receives the signals to the receiver. So we, we can use that. On the jumper, uh, the pro version with the uh, multi-protocol module built in, you would use this. With the standard jumper without it, you'd probably use the external because it's actually plugged in the back. If I turn this over, you can see what's called a JR bay. And it's it's this bay right here and you can plug modules into this which connects with these pins here so for example here's a r9 module or crossfire they just slide straight into that and then you can use different uh, protocols with with your uh, transmitter <clears throat> and the original jumper the multi-protocol module was plug just plugged into that bay there so to use that you'd use the external uh, module. So let's get that focused again. Um, so what you now need to do, I don't know if it will show it, if we're going external, it may go through the, the, the lots of different types. So if you're using a jumper or a radio master, you'll probably see a list like this if it's going to show it. So you got XJT, which is Free Sky, DSM2, which is Spectrum, Crossfire, Multi Protocol, um, R9. S plus. So if we look in multi, it will give you all your different options for dry sky, pre sky, DSM2, all that sort of stuff. So that's where you go if you've got a, a jump rule. If it's in the external, it'll be there, but in the internal, you should be able to get to it um, through the internal module path. So I'll turn this back off because we're using the internal. So let's see what's on here. So we've got XJT, which is the standard free sky internal um, module. 
So that, yeah, because it knows it's an X9D, that's the only option it gives you. But as I say, the jumper um, T16 Pro and the Radio Master TX16S, and I'm assuming the new um, jumper uh, T18, you'll have all the multi protocol stuff in there, um, and I'd imagine the R9 stuff. So, what we're going to do. We choose our internal module and then we choose the protocol that we're using. And the protocol is basically the language effectively that they use to talk to each other. So this is an L9R, L9R receiver which uses the LR12 uh, protocol. So we need to click on that and choose LR12. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, choose bond. So what I need is a little stick because okay. as I say this this is the biggest problem with free so you, you've got to push this button in and hold it in when you power it onto bond so that's why the switch comes in very useful so I'll bring this down as low as I can to get rid of the antennas and what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll do it switching the receiver on first so if we power this on this the it's now in bind mode and you can see that the red light is solid and if I bind it so we turn this on, you'll get a beep. And that means it's trying to bind it. So we can see that's now flashing, so it found. So we'll switch the receiver off, turn the radio off, turn the radio back on, and then turn the receiver on. And that is it. So See the aileron is moving our aileron, elevator to the elevator, throttle is doing nothing because we're not armed, so if we arm it, throttle moves, and the rudder. So that's, that's all bound up, absolutely perfect. So the next thing that we might have is, if we're not using a standard aeroplane, but we're using a flying wing, because that's a different set of warrants. So what I'll do is switch off the receiver, we no longer need our rudder, because we don't have a rudder. We just have two servos that control both the pitch and the roll, um, and they're known as elevons. So what we need to do is, if we click on menu, and page through to our mixer, we don't need to change any of the inputs because we're using the same configuration for that. What we can do in the mixer is we need to get rid of the rudder, if you're on a flight controller, you don't do this whatsoever, you leave it as standard. But this is if you have a flying wing using a traditional receiver, no flight controller, just servers, that's okay. So we'll delete the rudder. And then what we're going to do is we'll edit the weight because we want to reduce that down to 50% for a flying wing. And I'll explain why in a moment. So we'll set that to 50 and we'll do the same with the elevator. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to copy the aileron, so we hold it down, copy, and we're going to paste that into the elevator. And then we're going to take our elevator, copy, and paste that into the aileron. And what we will need to do um, is reverse one of them, because if I switch on the receiver, You'll see both of these are now moving. But they're all moving the same way. And what you'll find is it's hard to show this without actually having a wing. But the servos are usually facing the same physical direction. That is usually out the other side. Which doesn't help with our, our diagram. So give me one second and I'll sort that out. Right, 
Right, so we're back with our flying wing. So if you look, if I do elevator, it's actually moving what we'd expect from the ailerons. And if we move ailerons, it's still doing what we'd expect the ailerons. What we need to do is reverse the weight in one of these. And to do that, you just go down to the weight, click it, and then press both buttons again to make it negative. So if we exit out, we now have the elevator looking more like an elevator, and the ailerons are looking like ailerons still. And it actually looks like it's right around. You imagine the control surface is here. When we pull back on the stick, we want it to pull the control surfaces up. So that's working correctly. And the same with this, if we bank, um, if we want to bank over to the right, we want this one to go up and this one to go down. Um, there's a video series by a group called Flight Tests, and they came up with a, a thing called the High Five which is a great way of remembering whether your control surface is the right way around. So what you want to do is if you pull this down, you want the surface to go up as if it's trying to high five the stick. So that's going up. And the same with that, you want, if it's going right, you want the right one to go up to high five it. So that's working correctly. So that there is how you set up the flying wing. And the throttle is obviously the same as it was for the plane. So you just half weight and then add a negative to one of them. You may need to play about with which one is the negative for your particular model, depending on which way around the servos are, or all that sort of stuff. But that's the basics. Right, so what I said was, we need, need them to be 50%. And the reason why is because it's a mix. You want the total of the channel to add up to 100. For getting uh, the negative symbol, in this case, we want the total to add up to 100. So the 50 plus 50 is 100. And the reason why is, while you're doing this, that's fine. That's 50% that's of the movement. But if you roll right and up, you get 100% of the movement. So when you're in that position, that's really all you want the servo to go to. Any more than that, it can start struggling and doing all sorts of bad stuff. So you want that to add up to 100 in total when it's all like it. So that's why it's 50 bit. You'll find on other planes, um, you may need a slightly different setup. So for example, um, you can get forward swept wings and um, wings with straight wings which are known as planks and um, I believe it's forward swept wings are more roll sensitive and planks are more pitch sensitive so what you can do on here is if your aircraft is more roll sensitive take the A and edit the weight of the A to say 30 or 45, 30, let's do it 35 or something. So the A would be 35. And the, the, um, the E for the elevator would be 65. Because then that, that, you know, 65 plus 35 is 100. So that's the 100%. So again, I'll do that up here. So we have E here. So that would be minus 65. And the A would be 33. So now we're out here. We've got more movement in the pitch that you can see and less in the roll, but we still have full 100% movement. So that's that's how you'd set it up for a pitch sensitive plane, or sorry, roll sensitive plane. It's got more in the pitch 
and uh, less in the roll. Again, if it's uh, the other way around, if it's if it's a pitch sensitive plane, you you just have the 65 on the on the A and the 35 on the E. They're, they're example figures. You you need to tune it to get it nice for your plane, or you'll you'll win. So that's that's how you do that. So what? I think we're pretty much done with this video. So. Just to recap, we know how to set up a model, a, a basic model. We know how to manually add all the inputs and mixes to get a traditional and a, uh, a flying wing set up. We can now modify for a forward swept or a plank. So we have a timer which we can reset and we have a very basic arm switch. I, I, again, please do try and find or visit my tutorials to get a better arm switch because it's, it's a safety feature. It's, I will be making a video on how to do it as well. Um, but yeah, please do set up a, a proper safety arm switch rather than just doing that quick method. But so yeah, we have everything that we need to get to get flying with a basic traditional aircraft. So what's coming in the new videos in the future? Well, as I mentioned during this video, we'll do a video straight away which covers um, rates and expo. I'll explain what those things are and how to set them up in the radio. And a quick way of setting it up so that you can uh, just change a single value and it will change the expo uh, or the rates for each area. Probably better with expo because rates you might want to tweak for each control surface. but. Uh, Expo is fairly generalised, but we'll go into that in the next video. And the video after that, uh, which was originally going to be my next video, is going to be on OpenTX Companion, which is a computer package where you can back up, restore, uh, update the firmware, and actually modify all your models on your computer. And the reason I'm going to use that is because I believe it will be easier to show tutorials using the companion where it's on a screen rather than just on the transmitter itself. Um, but we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go through all that good stuff. It's also handy for backups, that sort of thing. So that will be the next video. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love a thumbs up. If you think it's rubbish, thumbs down. Uh, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so any new videos that come out you're notified about um, when they when they arrive um, and if there's anything on OpenTX that you struggle with then please leave a message in the comments and I'll, I'll stick that in a, a video so basically stuff I'm looking to cover is going to be flaps the arming switch uh, we'll do a, a crow glider setup pan and tilt reflex for gliders i can't remember what the other the opposite for reflex is called at the moment but we'll, we'll do all that sort of stuff uh we'll look at uh logical switches which opens up a whole world of functionality uh, we'll be looking at flight modes that will be on the flaps video because there's there's interesting things you can do with flight modes but it, yeah there's there's a lot of stuff planned for this series so uh, yeah, please subscribe and please watch the next videos. It, it really does help a tiny little channel like mine just having those extra clicks on. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.